What is up, guys? I have done a ton of research to look at what the best decks are, winners and losers, post Photon Hypernova and ban list, because I don't know what to play. I'm trying to figure out what to play, and I'm going to try and share the research that I have found with you right now. But before you do, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It's a lot of work to do all this stuff, guys. It's a ton of work. Yeah. Ghost Bros Gaming. I think Cash Tiro was poised to be a tier one deck if Tier Elements wasn't hit so hard because people needed to side against Tier Element. However, with Cash Tira now being basically the best deck in the format, as it seems, I think that we're going to be seeing a lot more people maining three Nib, three Book of Eclipse, and then maybe even Ash, which is a lot of cards for a deck that kind of already has a lot of trouble playing through disruptions. Uh, this deck is, you know, Cash Tira is not able to play through multiple disruptions. It's already kind of bricky. <clears throat> and... I hate to say it, but I think Cash Tira might be a loser in this situation, even though it's still going to be <clears throat> a tier one deck. Next up is Despia. So I think Despia is a huge winner here. It took no hits on the ban list, unlike in the OCG where Branded Fusion is to one, um, and it got a ton of great support in Grand Guignol, the Dusk Dragon, and Rinbrum, the Striking Dragon. So now the main play is actually to use Branded Fusion to send Mercurier and Albaz to make Rinbrum, the Striking Dragon, which lets you negate the effect of a extra deck monster. And then you can banish Mercurier with Abyssal to add a, another Branded card and then make uh, your Mirror Jade, which can then be negated by your Rinbrum so that you can send the Albion from your extra deck to the, to the uh, graveyard as cost and still be able to use it next turn. And so next turn, you basically end on, you know, a set branded in red, a Rinbrum, which is negation of an extra deck monster, and Mirror Jade, which is a banish plus additional follow-up through the Albion that's gonna be sent to the graveyard. Or even I've seen people sending the new tri the Tri Brigade one. Uh, I think it's like Brigand, so that you can summon Albaz during the end phase and then fuse away anything that your opponent has left on board. I think that Branded is a huge benefactor in this, and it's definitely going to be one of the best decks in the format. The next decks I'm going to talk about are Sprite and Sprite variants. I think that Sprite was. I think that Sprite was a loser. Uh, I think that Sprite got unnecessarily hit with Sprite Elf and that I think that it really hurts your grind game and your ability to recur and set up good boards. Uh, obviously there's the Bujinki combo to still go into Toad and then you can grab the Sprite Double Cross, I think, which is the trap so that you can bring Toad back. But the problem is that before you would have the smashers instead of the double cross and you'd still be able to bring the toad back so your board goes from two omni negates and a banish to just two omni negates in that situation with potentially a monster negate depending on what you drew if you drew the red or the the carrot and then your follow-up is severely hurt after that and so i'm I'm not sold on Sprite as being a winner in this situation. Um, I do think that Sprite will be a really good deck in the upcoming format, especially since it was already able to play Dimension Shifter. It doesn't care as much about the Macrocosmos effect of the um, the Kashira Rise Heart, but I just don't know if it can compete and keep up with some of these decks in the format. Um, Sprite Tri Brigade, I don't think is playable. I think Pure Sprite might be the best option. Runic Sprite, um, Runic Sprite actually gets the thumbs up. I played against Runic Sprite at locals, and uh, the deck has a lot of potential. I'd say maybe that's probably the best variant because before with Runic Sprite, you were just relying with the Elf to resummon the Iperia anyway for additional draws. So Runic Sprite, maybe that's the way you play Sprite. A deck that has been getting a lot of attention and it's something that we've covered pretty extensively on our channel is Labyrinth. And I think Labyrinth is a huge winner here. Uh, Labyrinth not only got 
uh, new cards in the form of Big Welcome Labyrinth, which is a huge consistency as well as removal boost for the deck. Um, but they also got a new trap card in weight measuring, which is another great option to the already uh, broad toolkit that Labyrinth can use. Um, I also think the deck has protection from like, say, built in, built in from like, say, Harpy's Feathers Duster. Um, and it's just kind of hard to deal with if you draw the right cards. And I think that is the kind of the issue is that sometimes you don't always draw the right cards and then your opponent is just kind of able to continue playing, which is what you don't want in Labyrinth. It's a very grindy deck. Overall though, Labyrinth is a huge winner and I think it's gonna be say, Tier 1.5 to even tier one, honestly, in the meta with Trellements completely out of the picture. Um, the only problem is it's, it's kind of expensive. Flo Andres is a loser. And I think that's pretty obvious. They lost the barrier statue. And there are some people who are trying to experiment with the small world bridge to uh, grab, say, like another barrier statue to prevent your opponent from playing uh, as well, because that's what Flo Andres players love. They just like preventing you from playing, kind of like Labyrinth players. Uh, but with the barrier statue gone, I think that Floanderies falls to like a tier two or even lower deck, honestly. Like, I just don't know why you would play Floanderies where D Shifter was another huge win condition for you as well that you could easily play. But Cash Tira doesn't care about that, and that's going to be one of the best decks. Branded doesn't particularly care about that, and that's again one going to be another one of the best decks. I don't think Flo is going to be that good. Next up is a deck that's near and dear to my heart personally, which is Notoria. Uh, and specifically say like, let's say the Notoria Shizu, we'll talk about that first. Uh, that deck is honestly a huge loser. The reason that deck was so good was because Tyr was so popular. They're all earth. So the bestials that people are maining to combat Tyr aren't useful. And you had the shufflers and the millers and you plus when your opponent milled you. So without that, I do think Naturia Shizu got a lot weaker. However, a winner in this, I would say, is Naturia Runic. So Naturia Runic was a deck that we saw top uh, a decent amount pre um, Dad Darkwing Blast <laughs> release tier. I think that Naturia Runic might be a strong variant, and I'll put that one as a winner. Um, in this ban list because without having to worry about Tyr Elements in this format, I think that that deck can actually be a tier two or even higher tier, tier 1.5 deck. Draco Slayers is a deck that I also really like. Uh, I was planning on playing that before I played Naturia last format. I do think that Draco Slayers are a really good deck this format. Uh, I think that they in general are a winner on this ban list. However, the problem is that when you go up against Cash Tiro, which is a deck that you should be expecting to see a lot, if they know you're playing that deck, then they just lock your pendulum zones and you kind of lose. Now, unfortunately, if you don't draw any disruption anyway, like say a Nibiru or a Book of Eclipse, it probably doesn't matter what deck you're playing, uh, which I've seen some People theorizing, say, I think Jesse Cotton mentioned, like, if you don't draw an out anyway, you're probably not going to win that game regardless. So it doesn't make a ton of sense, uh, in my opinion, to worry about that as much. I do think the Draco Slayers will be a really good option into this format, but I think it'll be a tier two, tier 1.5 deck. It sets up some nasty turn one boards, but does kind of struggle playing in, on a turn two. Plunder Patrol is kind of underrated this format. So Plunder Patrol kind of depends on what attributes your opponent plays. However, with the new Synchro Jord that came out in Photon Hypernova, you can actually special summon a token to your opponent's field of the attribute that you like. Uh, and then you can kind of special summon out of the extra deck using your Plunder Patrol monsters based on the attribute of that token uh so i think that with jord plunder patrol can move into say like a tier 1.5 even high tier 2 status but the problem with uh plunder patrol that i see is that they do lock you into plunder patrols and if you get interrupted in that combo it can hurt it also plays the adventure engine or at least a lot of the decks that i have seen have been playing the adventure engine and 
unfortunately the adventure engine is kind of expensive still. So I still am gonna put it as a huge winner in this format. Runic, we've already talked a little bit about Runic. Runic is a massive winner here because Runic was basically not being played because it died to the shufflers. Like if, if they shuffled your three targets back with Fountain, it kills your grind game, right? Uh, Runic really depends on taking advantage from the opponent and grinding the game out. And once that advantage engine has been cut, it's really tough to, to play around that. Now, they still have an uphill battle against Cash Tira because the cards are gonna get banished. However, they do have three cards that are searchable through Runic Tip, basically, uh, just the ones that negate an effect monster. So you could theoretically negate the Arise Heart so that your cards don't go to the graveyard. But then again, it kind of falls into another also, another issue as well, in that when Cash Tira, once Cash Tira knows you're playing a spell trap deck, they lock your spell trap zones. Um, which really hurts <laughs> in Runic. But overall, the deck is now playable. It is it is going to be tier two, uh, and I think that it's a huge winner here. So Sword Soul is a huge winner, I would say. I think it's a really great deck. Being able to make a Barone and an Effect Negator as well as put a Blackout down to pop two monsters, it's a lot of disruption that only really requires, say, like one or two cards. Um, you also have the Tinyes, which provide you a lot of flexibility in how you approach built boards, so they don't really mind going second as much. And you have a decent amount of flex spots in the deck to be able to kind of play things that uh, would disrupt your opponent, say like Nibiru or Book of Eclipse, which are gonna be really good this format. So I think that Sword Soul is a great, uh, great option if you're looking for a deck that's actually kind of budget, right? I think Steven said he got the core for like 90 bucks. Pretty good. All right, so to sum up the decks that I think are winners and losers here, I think at your tier one level, you're going to have Branded and Cash Tira as the two best decks. They received no hits. In fact, they both got support in Photon Hypernova that allows their inboards to be a lot more deadly. So tier one, Cash Tira and Branded. For tier 1.5, which I think are decks that have a lot to approve and could either go to the tier one status, depending on how the meta shakes out, or going to tier two are some of the sprite variants, I'll say pure sprite and sprite runic, I think are tier 1.5. I'd also put pure runic and runic notoria in the tier 1.5. And I'm also gonna throw labyrinth here. So I think labyrinth has a lot to prove as well, but is probably the best of the tier 1.5 decks in my opinion. For tier two in Rogue, I'm going to put our other sprite variants, which are Sprite Gishki and Sprite Tri Brigade here. I'm also going to drop the uh, Sword Soul deck here, although it is at the top of tier two. I do think it kind of will struggle against some of these tier one decks. They just generate that just generate too much advantage. Uh, and then I'll also throw Draco Slayer and Flunder here in the tier two slash Rogue category for the upcoming format. Oh yeah, and Plunder Patrol. How do I forget Plunder Patrol? Plunder is a tier two slash rogue deck in my opinion. All right guys, so that is it for the post Photon Hypernova and ban list winners and losers. I have done a lot of research to look this up. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. You know, it's not that hard. You just, you just hit that like and subscribe button, you know? Ghost.